uh, ka tangi te titi, ka tangi te kaka, ka tangi hoki koeu, uh, te hei mauri ora. Uh, <coughs> te wehane a kia hoa, te timatango te kupu, mau ngā rongo pai ki rongi te whenua, aroha nui ki ngā tangata katoa. Uh, e kaupapa tēnei uh, i ngā mahi tuku iho o mātou nei tipuna, uh, ki te tiaki i o mātou nei uh, taonga. Uh, me ki rā uh, te whakapapa kei wanganui a tātou. Uh, e hono ai uh, ki a rangi nui me papatua nuku. Uh, ko te tūmanako, hei whaka oho oho, uh, hei, hei whaka tū hono i a tātou katoa i rungi i tērā āhuatanga. Uh, ko tōku a kaupapa kōrero e pāna ki tētahi a mahi a uh, I Waimari e au uh, ki te noho ngā tahi uh, i ngā pūkenga o te whānau me ngā kaumātua kuia uh, i te mahi kai, uh, te mahi tuna, uh, te mahi a, a tangoro, a tai atu uh, ki te ngāhere uh, <coughs> ki a tāne mahuta arā te waunui a tāne. Nō reira, tēnā koutou ngā kārangatanga maha ka wanganui a tātou. Ka timatau i te huri ki tērā reo a whakamohi o tia a, a, e tātou a, ka huri au ki te reo pākea. <coughs> e, first off the rank, yeah. in the session of uh, speakers, um, I'm not the best to at speaking and staying on track and um, <coughs> also uh, off the machine. Um, I'm better at showing as we do it how, how it unfolds and trying to explain and figure out together. Yeah, so um, yeah. Uh, I'm just thankful of this opportunity anyway because the kaupapa is really important. And I like to start with um, the tuna and te awanui. Uh, tuna being a species um, and te awanui um, being both a, uh, a sense of a pathway or a passage and also um, a, a geographic for the moana or tauranga. And the tuna is very dependent on this te awanui in order to exist for the millions of years that it has and um, I've learnt a lot through um, observing the seasons, the weather, the stars, the moon, the conditions. Uh, I didn't get so much into hunting, um, like deer hunting, like some of the other whānau, but uh, I have a tuakana uh, who's unable, he's at work, um, he would be more inclined to talk and spe specifically about the tuna. He's my tuakana, I leave that to him. And so I'm here kind of representing our connection and our whānau um, to, the te, to Te Awanui through the tuna. So this photo, just quickly, this, this, this is a mamai tuna heke, caught at a screen cleaner trying to make her way out to sea to complete that mission of uh, the life cycle, the final stages. And um, after the rebirth out at sea, we have the, the moko tuna, which come up and um, populate um, their freshwater homes. So this is a bit of tangaro ki uta, ki tai, a bit of tāne mahuta, a bit of tai ao. It's, to me, it's all, they all want it up. If I get lost down there, I'll get lost up there. But I don't have the experience like of Jack, so I'll leave that to someone else when we go beyond the horizon. Um, yeah, so yeah, well, well, oh, that's right, I'm in the, I got the button. Yeah, so I think it's a bit uh, um, not aligned. Where do I push it to this or that? Oh, yeah, you pushed the button, bro. Yep, I mean. So Te Awanui, <coughs> a pathway, a passage, uh, migration. So here we have um, 
the Kōrero Pūrāko o Mauau. We're at the Wharekura o Mauau. And for Tauranga Moana, for our pepeha, it kind of provides a, a, a blueprint for um, connection between tangata and whenua, uh, Māori in, in with the land or that, that Māori geography. And uh, I like to start here because um, it's important when we start that we begin um, with our taumata kōrero uh, and honour those, especially here I have this opportunity um, being from Tauranga to at least acknowledge our pepeha. <coughs> e hika tuake ki runga rā whiti ki taua, hei tamatū kumea ki te uru uea ki te tonga, hiki nuku hiki rangi i arara ka ngāru e ka ngāru e. Toia ki te hau maranga kia whakarongo taku kiri ki te kikini o te rehutai. O ngā ngaru whati whati e hararu mai nei, wī, 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 wā, 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 ā, ha, ha. Horohia o mata kia mere mere tuahi ahi. Hei take i te ara kia tangaroa. He atua hao i te tini ki te pō e koko ia e ara e. So this is our kōrero pūrāko. And it's told in the, th in, in the first person by the Patu Paiari. It's known as the chant. And they're fa basically farewelling their friend. And the legend goes back in the days um, of the Hotere, when the, where this nameless mountain uh, once resided. The nameless mountain stood between Otani Wanuku, the great chief, and Pufenua. The chiefness and he made his feelings known of affection for Pūwhenua and she rejected him. So he decided to go out to sea and be no longer of the Aumarama. And uh, he called upon the mystical people of the night, the Patu Pairehe, and they wove together all these strands out of the Ngahere and they dragged them. They dragged them and during uh, that event, kai uh, ai uh, tēnei uh, pātere, i wahi o tia nei uh, ki a kore, e ware ware tō mātou nei hononga o ngā marae, te iwi o tauranga mōna, ki ngā maunga, ki ngā awa, ki te mōna. So, <coughs> coming back to the stream that was created, the Waimapu, the Weeping Waters, until there came a time where these Patu Paiarehe, being the mystical people of the night, could feel the sunrise. So they decided, look, we have to go, and they left and farewelled their friend. So this, this Maunga Pononga, with no name, uh, became uh, caught, Mo, Ao, in the light, uh, Mo Ao, and that's our Maunga. Uh, come on, you can, when the crown said we're going to give Moal back, some of the elders probably go, oh, is he coming back to, you know, where, because I live up there where he came from, up the top of the Waimapu and um, in the bush. So that shows our connection of these pathways. Um, you've got the spiritual pathways of our tipua, our tupuna, our pepeha, and to me, I feel that's a blueprint for all passageway. And if you can understand the legend, the pūrāko, you're better placed to understand um, what you may observe right that unfolds right in front of you. Some things you can't even explain. Um, just like some of these things you can't explain. You know, when you're out there doing the mahi, things that you can explain, things that you can't, and there's a lot of query for research and inquiry <laughs> once you get out there. Um, from collecting data to making observations and testing any at all that's been handed down. Or practices, traditions. So um, <clears throat> with regards to the tuna, um, I, I was up in Auckland and oh, I've got to go to uh, do something. Um, to pass some time before um, I think my boys were heading off overseas, just over to Aussie, 
So I um, decided to go to the Auckland Museum. And on my way, I, go, oh, I took it for granted that, oh, I never mind the Auckland, uh, the, the, the New Zealand part, the Aotearoa part. And I thought, oh, no, I better go there. So I went up there and had a look. And then at that time, I was working on a, a, as a cultural monitor um, some earthworks that they were putting in a new uh, roading network very close to uh, our awa and very close to our urupa, which is a re which has been repurposed from a um, from a par site. And I came across this, um, and it meant a lot to me. And it was Te Awa o Te Tuna, the river of the eels, as told in the stars. And that always kind of stuck with me because from time to time, and I think around that time, Jack and I would catch up and try and put two and two together. And Jack Thatcher, um, Te Kapene, he's also our, our whanaunga through uh, Ngai Te Ahi at Hauerini Marae. In, anyway, um, I felt like, oh, this needs to be a, a bit more applied to some of the, uh, at that time, relocation work that we were going to do because the, the project that come across a wetland uh, wasn't really deemed a wetland, but to me it was a wetland and it had these giant kokopu and tuna in there and I stopped them and got into a bit of, as you do when you do your job, um, can get into trouble and um, by speaking up, someone had to call it all for these, uh, for our whakapapa and um, it led to, yeah, uh, a lot more awareness in the consenting side of things. So uh, when you go for resource consent, there's um, what they call a wetland mitigation or offset. So this policy had just been passed around 2014. This was around 2015. And then we looked at implementing it um, the first time as a cultural heritage as well as the wetland through um, the consenting process. And that was NZTA's Maungatapu underpass. <coughs> so I just talked about uh, Te Pahu wetlands, um, the underpass, and it led to um, the work that we are doing now. Uh, I'm actually kind of really um, under the pump. Our team is at that job because it's our last year of planting season and we're behind schedule. So we're doing all that we can, and while we're behind schedule, is because the soil's been contaminated, um, the plant pests um, are phenomenal, and um, the topography of the land, a lot of it's been pushed over, so it's not stable, and um, it's been used as a dump. And part of the background to what's happening now is that um, because it's surplus, it surrounds our par site, and our par site's been repurposed, repurposed as a cemetery and um, it's just being treated by the authorities over time as a dumping ground and that's why it's taken so long to get things um, correct in terms of the resource consent to achieve a certain standard. So there's a lot of work going on into developing um, the, the wetlands and the cultural component of that is we've been able to restore right next to it that sits in the middle of the, the wetlands is the, and I apologise, I don't have the photo, uh, sits the pa and the urupa, which sits on the top of the pa inside the ring, if you can imagine the protective, the ring ditch trenches, the urupa sits in there. And some of you may or may not know, but you drive, it's on alongside the main state, state highway and you don't even know it's there. So another back, uh, a backdrop to a lot of the work that's been involved around here is that we're just trying to fix what infrastructure and the Crown have done over the years because our, our marae associated with the Rurupa has the big main state, ha state highway 29 going through it now. So this, these, these are just one of many barriers. So we live, we, we've got this opportunity to actually make it better for the next generation. So um, that's why that's uh, current and I'm still holding my breath because we don't know how we're going to get there. 
um, basically to plant and do everything in two years, which, uh, in one year, what you would normally do in two. But TCC may come and support us with further resources, but NZTA are closing their component of that particular consent. Anyway, just digressing uh, from there um, and going back in, uh, to the presentation around um, during the phase of monitoring those earthworks and encountering the wetlands, uh, like that information that I referred to um, brought me to look at other aspects around uh, what research was out there and what was available to incorporate uh, the cultural narrative into the reporting so that we could get those type of consent conditions. Hence we've got like a, a ecological cultural perspective on the consent around that um, remediation works. So basically the the project um, have the consent to put it through. Because of the damage done, it triggers the mitigation and the offset, and that's what we're delivering is the three hapu. So um, Fulton Hogan's and all the other um, usual suspects, um, they're in competition with us to, to get that. Uh, so in the end, they done a bit, and we done most of it, and it's essentially our, our project because of these, because of the cultural narrative. And uh, given that same court at all, this was given to Fulton Hogan to have the liaison person, and we worked in quite well. Um, so the court at all came from us to him and to the kura. And um, during the temporary works, there was an opportunity to put a temporary bridge. And these are ex examples of the earth uh, the artwork that the tamariki done. Um, everything else was graffiti and. You know, people even pinched the diesel out of the diggers, but none of these were touched. Yeah, no one um, to do with the, with the mahi or the tamariki. <coughs> so we, I mentioned that kōrero about the stars, and um, uh, this is looking at matariki in um, the height of the Ramatuna season. So... Um, I didn't really know that much about Matariki and the timing as we celebrate it now. But during when we grew up, we knew at least the call the pot. And um, my grandfather, he was, he was a hunter. And um, he was like Orion, basically. He, I heard he was a hunter. And uh, there was, he, he like, like used to read things in the bush, and especially um, um, the deer. His main thing, he was, it was a deer stalker. But as I hear from the elders, it was all in the upbringing from in the time when they hunted the kereru to the pig. And in my time, I caught the last bit of the deer. And then um, the same knowledge it transferred it to the tuna. And like the cousin Willie, he could gaff with both hands. So, um, yeah, he, I think he, he came out torching with us into his late 70s. Um... But anyway, anyway, uh, this getting back to um, the knowledge of the stars, he would um, talk about uh, things like midnight at a, around, and tangaroa kio kio and a phase that um, as soon as after the full moon, you'll start preparing um, for going into hunting mode. And um, they didn't explain, they just, they, they just engaged. And when the conditions were right, harvested. So this is around December. I got a little app and um, just started to, you know, look at, oh, what's the stars doing now? And um, see if I could see them and try and pinpoint them at particular uh, phases of the maramataka. So um, this, this is around midnight in December, two Decembers ago. That's what the night would have looked like. And with Jack's kōrero, uh, with the, the waka o tamarereti and te kokota, and I started to learn a bit more, you know, um, this is, oh, well, matariki, but some of these other names, totoru, um, yeah. Uh, so, I don't want to go too much into it because I'll go off, go off track. 
Um, oh. So I know around the full moon, um, there's a day before, because it's a cycle, and I just figured out when you put the stopwatch, you start from zero, and then it's a one. And I've seen some other, because a, a good brother of mine, and uh, some of his whanaunga here from down the far, far no up in they really observed the moon in that full moon. And um, which was kind of backwards with starting everyone, not everyone, but most start their calendar from when you can't see the moon. But sometimes you can and sometimes you, you can't, so it's really difficult to, to do as a starting point. So I looked at Oturu, at the time as the moon goes down, the sun goes up. Around spring, um, Venus is really close to the, to the sun. So that, because that, that, the planets are moving, um, you know that you're coming into, um, by looking at the stars, you're coming into the, sp the spring. So I've looked, at the, I've looked at the stars. This is just like looking a, a bit at the moon and the sun. Just the other day, um, the in, the, my cousin's in-laws, they've uh, owned this land for quite a while. Uh, it's up in the Kaimai. We actually live on the other side of Ohoweti on the other ridge, and we look across up to the Kaimai. And um, we've got our, our stargazing pa on, on our side. And um, again, the Karoa used to talk about a place called Matai Fetu. And it just happened to be um, one of the archaeologists that we've worked with, they also have owned the farm. Um, they're looking to protect this par site. So it's the first time I went up there. And um, the stories at the, the time this, this whanau's been there in the last 60 years, and what they've observed from the aurora down, down south and other um, um, events has, has been quite, um, yeah, quite special to them. So we're on our on our uh, on our Rokawa side, we we've kind of connected through to the Kaimais. So it felt, feels like going back home um, because. We've eeled through here and we've been to some places and we've known that we've been there before because someone would have had to tell us how to get there and what to do. And a lot of um, our, our time growing up, before the, the bears and that came along, um, we used to go out hunting on, in, in the, at night. But then uh, we got a bit older and some of us gave it up and some of us carried it on and um as as you do um whatever's important to you you still retain and i can still remember these places and how to get around these places and later on our whanau finding out how we connected to the land trust there through our through our um through our whakapapa so it doesn't yeah it doesn't feel like um foreign so you always go you obviously you do your karakia um, de depending on what you're doing when you're going somewhere new or embarking on a new activity and especially if you're going into somewhere where you really haven't been yeah so I was it actually felt like going back and looking back across to Otane Wainuku and to this eastern side of the bay from up there in the, in the Kaimai so the Kaimai if you're coming over from Hamilton um, the area that I'm talking about, you go over the Kaimai Hill and as you're coming down, um, you're actually coming down through the Kaimai area and that's on the left of the main road. So these are, the, these are some of the tohu that are kind of, a, um, that, that kind of signify, um, I suppose, a tar the start of the tuna season to the end. Um, this, this is just around home. There's other tohu that you can use um, but the ability is to be able to recognise tohu. That's the, um, the pepe tuna, the pūriri mop, which actually comes out of the, um, oh, I just can't remember the name of the plant. Then they burrow into the, um, into the trunk. And the other there is the harore. So basically the harore comes up on the tower um, after the second 
cool frost. So we haven't really had a good cool frost for a while um, because of the weather and because we haven't had any harori. I've been asked to go and have a look, so I know trusty sources and even looking, they, they happen where um, this is a windfall. And they seem to talk to each other through the other tower in the bush. And that's how you know if you go to that one, if there's a windfall, you can go to that other one that next year. Uh, and that's when you know it's cold and you know no, no more tuna. Uh, they've gone into a like a hibernating phase. Um, and then you rely on other, other kai. By then, um, there would have been, the metal would have been coming on and the birds would have been harvested by here. So, um, and some of the, the kōrero that, um, with, with, with uh, some of the work that we've been doing, has actually influenced some of the local um, uh, artists, uh, toy Māori carvers, for this, this one here is Pete Smith from Ngāti Hangaro. Uh, we we're, we're actually at uh, Ngāti Hangaro. Um, behind here is, is um, Kukuwai, which is a wetland, and it was a significant wetland that held a spring, which still flows um, for Hangaro and those who participated in the um, Battle of Gate uh, Pa, Pukehinehina, and Te Ranga. Um, these were like the healing waters. And Kukuwai is part of the Kura. And part of the Kura's, um, one of the first missions was to protect that wetland. And actually, uh, our Fanonga, um, Bernie uh, Ahomiro, she completed her uh, doctorate on this. Kukuwai and developed a, um, a program for um, the preservation of the wetland there. So uh, that's, I've had a little bit of assistance with working with the, the council to kind of um, separate its stormwater to maintain the integrity of that puna and how it captures in a, in a separate uh, and keep it offline to the main stormwater. So basically the, 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 the old creek, or which is now the drain, um, most of what you see around here in the built up env environments, the mall and the residential all end up in there, down through the Carmichael wetlands. So it's trying to keep that away from any of that infiltration and influence. And even the Kura's own uh, stormwater, because it protects the tuna, um, um, especially the long fin, love the flow, yeah, more so than the short fin. Down in the lower areas, the tidal areas, there will be a bit of an exchange, it's a bit of a highway, but as you go up in the reaches, you'll find the long fin and the main creeks around here, but you'll find the short fins in little remnant swamps, like rope or swamps in and around the farms, there'll be, sh there'll be short fin in there, uh, where it's not so, uh, the river's, and not so um, so much flow in them. And um, yeah, Pete being from Ngāti Hangaro with Kukuwai having the association um, with uh, Ngāti Hangaro. Uh, this this kōrero for this tuna it comes from Ngāti Hangaro as a tuna when up in the Kaimai catchment uh, where they see this particular tuna, it's time to harvest. So um, it would be better if Pete was here. I'm just letting you know about some of our mahi, how it triggers, brings up some of the whānau to find their own kōrero and uh, build their, build on, extend on to their pepeha and their taiao. So the uh, migratory species for rangatawa, this, I'm from over the eastern side of, um, I grew up over on, on that side of, of Tauranga Moana. So, uh, Hyrene Bridge, Causeway, that Waimapu estuary and the Rangatawa estuary. Uh, we have um, migratory species that are important that also have pūrāko attached with them. Um, so we have the three whales of Ngā Pōtiki, 
kopu kairo, manga tawa, hiku rangi, oops, so hik, manga tawa and hiku rangi, manga tawa the mother, hiku rangi the calf, came into the harbour and um, the tide went out and then they tried to escape by going straight over and got caught in the sand dunes and um, they drank from the, uh, the sacred spring known now as Te Waiu o Te Tohora and became immortalised and the father whale came in looking for his whanau and he, he suffered the same fate and um, is known as the Kōpu Kairoa I was there this morning <laughs> to the another wetland mahi for the whanau out there with the Papa Kainga. But Te Waiu o Te Tohora that's, that's the particular stream that runs, it has a milky appearance. Uh, te tohora me ngā piharo o te kaiate. So what happens is the opposite to the tuna that go out to sea um, to breed the, uh, the piharo, the lamprey come in. So the big male, uh, the big, um, their big migration is coming in on the, on the back of the whales or the bigger fish and they detach in the tahuna when these bigger fish come looking for the smaller like you'll see the whales um, they'll follow in with our marine mammals and even our stingray, our fai. So there's a bit of activity that's happening out in the harbour it ends up in Rangatawa and bang these piharo detach and uh, they are up at the kaiate or they were um, haven't been there for a long time uh, the kaiate is part of another work that we've done on about three occasions with Niwa, separate projects, and that's um, Te Awa or Te Waitao. So you might have heard that uh, Nui Cooper and Tom Cooper uh, led that, and um, Tom went back to Mahi, and I've kind of carried it on in some form or another um, to be the eyes and ears out there and, and gather information where we need. But I don't know what's happening with the piharo. Got to go and have a look. TT to we have an inland flight path of the TT. That's the name of our stronghold at Kaiti Mako, part two Wata and um, that's that's what it is, <laughs> a TT to. So um, there are inland flight paths of button birds. Um, you you may know it's it's, it's nothing new, uh, but over you know over time. Mostly over our time as people, we have a lot of influence and change on the, on the landscape and it's when we have an opportunity to understand these, what these, what these kupu are, then we got a better, there's, there's your clue revealed. So yeah, this is just all, uh, just quickly with the tauranga, with our people coming in as, as a passageway, the waka, um, and then the migration of our people. Um, Rangi Hauhiri, we are Mata to a connection, and then even Mahina Rangi came through here back over the Kaimai. And I think that's it. I'll call call Potiwa, and I just want to leave there. This I drew this for the Kura. I was doing all these flash maps and GIS and aerial photos and all that. And then the, uh, my cousin, she was the um, the teacher there, which is now that we've got a, a separate curriculum, a Maro and um, I drew this and they could understand it. She gave me, set me down. I was going, yeah, cuz, set me down with some crayons and draw something. But this, this is the kura or maungatapu pūwhāriki. This is their māru. So they learn a lot of, it's got the marae, the maunga, the awa, uh, where certain species are, certain events. And uh, I, l little did I know that that would be so, mean so much to... Um, to the whanau, but these are little roto tuna, it should be rua tuna, um, and that's where they all used to congregate um, and then leave and depart for their hekinga to the moana nui akiwa. Sorry, Ray. Far out. <laughs> I thought I was far here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.